All right, welcome back, guys, to the GSMC Hockey Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're going to get right into our third segment, talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets and their new general manager and president of hockey operations that they announced today, Don Waddell, has taken over Jarmo Kekalainen's old role with the Columbus Blue Jackets. I would love to put this out before I start talking about the Blue Jackets. I did grow up in Columbus for the for all my life besides the past month I've lived in Columbus. I've been very close to this hockey team for my entire life. They are the reason that I do. uh, I'm going into a life in sports. So I do have to put my biases out there before I start talking about them here. Um, So I do know a lot more about the Blue Jackets than anybody else probably in the world. No, not that. But I do know a lot about the Blue Jackets, so I think I am very, I am very well fit to talk about them. If I do say so myself, they do hire a new general manager and president of hockey operations. It's Don Waddell. Looking at his career, he has a very impressive and very disappointing career up to this point. Uh, the highlight of it is winning a Stanley Cup. He has it uh, in his very first year as an assistant general manager in. Detroit, where they won the 97-98 Stanley Cup Finals. Um, That was his only season as an assistant general manager in Detroit. And then when the Atlanta Thrashers became an uh, organization, he was named as the first general manager of the Atlanta Thrashers. He served in that role until the Thrashers um, disbanded in 2009 and 2010 to become the Winnipeg Jets. He was with that organization their entire time Uh, under a few different roles uh he was promoted to team president um but it was a kind of disappointing career in atlanta of course they are not a team anymore so take that as you will excuse me um but it is a disappointing um career uh in atlanta where he really tried to um make that organization thrive and it never did only making it to the stanley cup playoffs only once in 2006 and 2007 when he won the southeast division with atlanta and then he was announced as a professional scout in 2012 after a couple years out of the nhl after that he does go in 2014 um he becomes the president of Gale Force Sports and Entertainment, which is the parent company for the Carolina Hurricanes. And then in 2018, he was named president and general manager of the Carolina Hurricanes, where until uh, today he was serving um, as the president and general manager of the Hurricanes. Um, now, Eric Tolsky is the one who came in to replace him, who is now the interim general manager for the Carolina Hurricanes. And today he is was announced to be um, president of hockey operations, general manager, and alternate governor for the Columbus Blue Jackets. A lot of titles there. Um, What's going on internally for the Blue Jackets, you had, uh, for those of you that don't know, they had to fire Yarmo Kekalainen after another disappointing year. Uh, It's been a couple of disappointing years for the Blue Jackets as of late. Uh, Yarmo Kekalainen has been a great general manager for the Blue Jackets, uh, he just has not been able to produce in the postseason, and as of late, it's been disappointing going through four straight years now, missing the postseason since their 2021 uh, series win over the Toronto Maple Leafs in that bubble playoffs where they eventually lost to the uh, um, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, that is the last time that we've seen them in the postseason was that crazy like six overtime game where... Uh, you know, we were all begging to go to bed from that one. Uh, So it's been a while since the Blue Jackets have been in the postseason. That is why Yarmar Kekalainen doesn't have a job anymore. What the new general manager, Don Waddell, is coming into is a fantastic young core in Columbus. You have a lot of great pieces for the Blue Jackets. The best prospect pool in the NHL from a bunch of different people. Consider it that a bunch of different professional uh, outlets that you know rank prospect pools have them number one because of fantastic forwards such as you have um gavin brindley adam fantilli dimitri vronkov jaeger chinnikov kirill marchenko cole cylinder alexander texier all these guys have been drafted uh since 2019 Uh, a lot of young guys here um those are just the forwards who are playing in the nhl right now 
And then you also have Adam Bokvist, who is 23 years old. Zach Kerensky is still 26. Can't believe that guy is still 26. I remember when the Blue Jackets drafted him back in 2015, uh, eighth overall. Uh, ever since then, he has been a key part and now the assistant captain in Columbus. You also have pieces, uh, Kent Johnson, who is uh, finished the season on LTIR. Uh, he, he is expected to be back for next year. Um, he is 21 years old as well, a top five pick in 2021. Uh, Patrick Laine, who is 26 years old. He is unfortunately in the NHL uh, PA player assistant program. He battled a bunch of mental uh, disorders throughout last year and decided to go into the um, NHLPA player assistance program. Unfortunately, we didn't see the rest of the year for Patrick Line, but hoping he can come back as he is a huge part for the Blue Jackets uh, and such a fantastic player and such an exciting player as well for them. You also have in the system fantastic, fantastic defensemen. From David Yerichek, who was a top, who was a sixth overall pick in 2022, then to Matejchuk, a um, then to Matejchuk, their twelfth overall pick in 2022, Carson Kuhlman's, uh the twenty fifth overall pick in 2021, um, Samuel Naz, Samuel Nasco. Uh, Old Bjorg Vikholm, Stanislav Svotzil, who was playing uh, for the um, uh, was playing with Connor Medard in the WHL for a couple of years. Uh, he is now signed to a contract. We've seen him in the NHL a couple of times. Uh, Marcus Bjork, who is a great prospect as well for the Blue Jackets. And then on top of that, they still have fantastic forward prospects such as Hunter McCown, who's 21 years old, Michael Piccia, who's 22 years old, Luca Pinelli, who they're very high on, uh, who has signed an entry-level contract for them, Luca Del Bel Belouz, who is playing amazing for the Monsters in their Calder Cup run. Amidst all of this, amidst all the shakeup, they are currently in the middle of a Calder Cup run where they are currently in the semifinals for the Calder Cup. And uh, old added in in the NHL is if your team wins a Calder, you're going to see that success in a in two years' time transpire to the NHL, at least going a little bit into a playoff run for them. But you also have prospects like Jordan Dumais, who led the QMJHL in scoring for like two years straight, um, was in that points race with Connor McDard in his draft year. Jordan Dumais has been very impressive for them. Uh, James Malatesta, who got some... Um, who got some minutes uh, on the NHL roster to end last season. He played very impressively for them. And on top of all of this, the Blue Jackets have also $23 million in cap space for this offseason. They are in such a fantastic position, and that's what Don Bodell is coming into, being the new general manager and POHA, president of hockey operations. He is coming into a fantastic core. Um, the players that he needs to resign is uh, five RFAs, and then you can re-sign Carson Meyer if you want to. Probably not going to. He's 26 years old. Doesn't look like he's an NHL forward. You need to re-sign. Um, Kent Johnson, you need to re-sign. Jaeger Chinnikov, Kirill Marchenko, Cole Sinlinger, and Alexander Texier. Those are the players you have to re-sign. Uh, you could also potentially re-sign Alexander Nylander, who played very impressively uh, once the Blue Jackets traded for him from the Pittsburgh Penguins in that one-for-one -one swap between Emil Bemstrom and Alexander Wenberg. So a bunch of young forwards is what you need to re-sign. All of these guys are going to be around 2 to $3 million, not really anybody going for much more, probably a bunch of bridge contracts while you figure out who is really worth keeping on your team. Uh, the only real guys that you're paying a lot of money for is Johnny Gaudreau on an almost $10 million contract that was given to him in the 2022 offseason. Uh, he has not really lived up to that contract, but it might not be his to blame because you have a lot of guys around him who have been underperforming, uh, including of those is Patrick Laine making $8.7 million. He is on the NHLPA program right now, so we'll see if that 8.7 is really within the cap space um, next year or if he stays in that program he could definitely need one more year it seems like that is likely for Patrick Laine right now we don't really know what's going on with him it's more of once we get news on Patrick Laine 
um, that's when things will be moving on him. So you also have uh, Zach Wierenski making nine point five million dollars uh, for the next four years. He earned that contract. He has been one of the best defensemen in the NHL the last few years. Uh, last year, he broke the Columbus Blue Jackets defensive points record as he finally had a healthy season after be- missing all of the prior year with an injury. They also have Demont Severson, Ivan Provorov, and Eric Gabranson all making north of $4 million on the blue line. So they have a lot of faith in those guys. They're going to try to fill the blue line next year with a bunch of their younger guys in David Yerchek, who is definitely ready to be in the NHL next year. Denton Matejcik might be able to make that step up. Carson Corson Kulemans could definitely make that step up as well. Um, this Blue Jackets core is going to be ready to compete, and this, these were the words that were echoed by uh, Don Waddell in his press conference today. He was introduced to the media today and talked about how ready this core could be to contend and how excited he was. There are just the the terms that he used was we need to figure out the loose ends, and once we tie up those loose ends, this team will be rolling. Um, that that to me strikes he's gonna he's gonna make some moves in on the on the you know with trades and he's gonna make some signings to get this team to where it needs to be to can be contending he said if we do if we tie up those loose ends this rebuild will go by very fast um they might be contending as quick as next year with a bunch of these teams in cap uh in cap trouble with we talked about how the uh carolina hurricanes could be in cap trouble going forward we talked about how the new jersey devils could be in cap trouble going forward we talked about how um you know a bunch of these metro teams could be in a lot of trouble moving forward into this offseason losing a lot of players so the columbus blue jackets are going to be one of the main contenders for a lot of these top end free agencies free agents and a bunch of these uh, you know trade um trade uh trade pieces where you know mitch marner for the toronto maple you've said has been the biggest name thrown out table tara vinen from the carolina hurricanes have been thrown out a lot so it's going to be interesting to see what don waddell does in columbus the new general manager he will be there for a while i would assume as the blue jackets don't move on from guys that fast unless they're their head coach <laughs> but that'll wrap it up for the columbus blue jackets and their new general manager and what i expect to see from him uh, once again, guys, I am from Columbus, so, um, you know, I, I do have to admit to my biases immediately talking about this team and talking about what they're going to do. So take that as you will. But once we get back to it after my third break of the night, we'll be talking about the Seattle Kraken and their new head coach as another team is hiring another piece for their team going into the 2024-2025 season. 